evening and welcome to the Christmas Eve service of the Cookville First United Methodist Church. We were down in the dark, now we glimpse a great light. Thank God we see a new day dawning. What was nothing is turning to something. Terror has tried us, storms have denied us, injustice has angered us, and apathy has discouraged us. But thank God today that we see a new day dawning. The yoke is broken and a new day is dawning, for a Savior is born to us all, a wonderful counselor to guide us, an everlasting Father to provide for us, and a Prince of Peace to draw near to us. It's a new day, and thank God for it. Let us worship the Lord our God. Tonight, we light all five candles, the candles of hope, peace, joy, love, and finally, the Christ candle, celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior. The candle of hope reminds us that in sending Christ, God sent hope to the earth. The candle of peace reminds us that the peace will one day reign. The candle of joy is a reminder that we have been given eternal life and have no reason to be fearful. And the candle of love represents God's redeeming love for us, brought to earth in the form of a tiny child. Light of light, shine in our hearts and renew our hope. Shine in our hearts and grant us peace. Shine in our hearts and bring us true joy. Light of light, shine in our hearts and fill us with love. Joy to the world, Emmanuel has come. May Christ light the way.
triumphant. O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. O come, let us Light from light eternal, lo, he shines not the virgin's womb. Son of the Father, begotten, not created. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Almighty God, help us to know your presence tonight and to worship you. Show us that the star shines before us if we will but see it, that the song of great joy is sung for us if we will but hear it, that the Prince of Peace is born in our midst if we will but give him place. Teach us in this hour to run with shepherds, to kneel with the kings, and to sing your praises with the choir of heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, whose birth we celebrate tonight. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from the ninth chapter of Isaiah, verses 2 through 7. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, 
as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, an authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forward and evermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sweet little Jesus boy, they made you be born in a manger. Sweet little holy child, didn't Take our sins away. I was blind, we couldn't see. We didn't know who you was. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there with he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were, they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. There were shepherds living out in the fields near Bethlehem, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified, but the angel said to them, 
Do not be afraid. I bring great news of great joy that will be to all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth, cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them into her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Good evening, beloved. One of my favorite movies 
for Christmas that's now kind of become a, a Christmas classic for our family is the movie Home Alone, the original Home Alone. If you remember, or if, you're, if you are familiar with the movie at all, it opens with a scene of a family in Chicago getting ready for a big European trip. They go to Paris for Christmas. So on the day they wake up, they, and they're supposed to travel, they wake up late, and they're rushing around the house trying to get ready and get to the airport, and it is utter chaos. It's a big extended, extended family, and it's like herding cats. The son, ironically named Kevin, they scream at Kevin all the time, gets lost in the chaos is, and is left home alone. The rest of the movie is how he survives being home alone and ultimately how he gets reunited with his family. We all experience a bit of what I have come to call the Christmas crazies, a bit of Christmas chaos nearly every year. It comes in different forms. This year, everything really feels chaotic in this very odd year 2020 we're having to adapt our Christmas Eve service our Christmas Eve communion because of COVID-19 just the fact that you are watching by video from your home on Christmas Eve is a reminder that our lives have been disrupted yet there is always good news God is always at work for good in all circumstances. Grace is always unfolding as God's continual loving action in our lives, in the life of the world. God is drawing near to us in and through Christ, whom we celebrate this night, who comes near even now, especially in the chaos of this very unusual year. We don't have grandchildren yet, but we do have grand dogs. If you've watched my grace notes over the last week and this week, you may have seen the grand dogs. My daughter came and visited early for Christmas and brought Winnie, her little dog. And Winnie is used to staying with us. Originally, we had planned to all be together, but because of COVID, th those plans got changed. But I was anticipating grand dog pandemonium in our house. We have a 15-year-old dog ourselves, and so Winnie comes and visits, and our little dog pouts. She goes to our closet and sometimes stays for days on end. So Winnie has visited, but then my son has come and has brought his new puppy, Banjo. And Banjo is a puppy. And so there's still some pandemonium. So whether it's with grandchildren or grand dogs, you may be experiencing a little bit of the Christmas crazies right now, the pandemonium that can be unleashed in your house. That Christmas is always that way in one way or another. So just remember, even in Christmas chaos, with a bit of Christmas crazies and pandemonium, Christ comes. What good news, Christ comes. I love the Amy Grant song titled, I Need a Silent Night. It captures for us the need for a little peace in the midst of the Christmas crazies. The words are, I need a silent night, a holy night, to hear an angel voice through the chaos and the noise. I need a midnight clear, a little peace right here to end this crazy day, these crazy days, with a silent night. We all need a silent night, a holy night, especially this year. We all do. 
But Christmas always comes in the midst of chaos and a bit of craziness, especially this year. If it's any consolation, the first Christmas was a bit chaotic too. Mary and Joseph were summoned by the Roman government to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem for a census for the purpose of collecting taxes. It was about a 10-day trip of 90 miles. Can you imagine? About like traveling from Cookville to Nashville or to Knoxville even on foot and or donkey. Can you imagine? Talk about craziness. Mary was highly pregnant. Great with child, the old King James said. Can you imagine? Then they went and stayed with the in-laws. Some of you are experiencing that right now. It's a little awkward sometimes. Then, far from home, already displaced, Mary and Joseph find no room in the inn, in the guest room, and they're out in the barn, in the stable, with the livestock. A bit crazy. Their visit was getting more and more unsettling by the moment. We're not even sure if Mary had a midwife, which was customary. So it must have been a very lonely and scary night for Mary and Joseph. With most births, there would have been a community chorus to celebrate the birth. Especially the birth of a first son. But not for Mary and Joseph so far from their home, even though it's an ancestral home. With rumors flying around about a suspicious birth and suspicious circumstances, it was all a bit chaotic. So not very soothing, not very peaceful. So Mary and Joseph are far from home. They're very unsettled, displaced. And the story just doesn't unfold as they anticipated. Not in Bethlehem. Not with the in-laws. Not with livestock looking on. The first Christmas was chaotic. A little bit crazy. So maybe there is some consolation For us, in knowing that Jesus' birth was chaotic. In the chaos, the good news is God came near. Always think of 14-year-old Mary. She must have been terribly unsettled and, and displaced, even a bit disoriented, especially for her, what we celebrate as the holiest night of nights might have been disturbing for her. But then, in the midst of that chaos, a holy hush comes. Jesus takes his first breath. The angels provide the celebratory chorus. Shepherds huddle in to see holiness displace chaos. In that first chaotic, crazy Christmas, all those who gathered around Christ were bathed in divine presence and light. When you really look at the story closely, there's a lot of chaos. A lot of disruption. Things don't go as planned or expected. Yet God comes near. Full of grace and truth. I always remember the story that Frederick Buechner tells of visiting St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. In the early 1960s, he was there for Christmas Eve Mass. Maybe some of you watched that on television. Maybe it'll be on tonight. Christmas Eve Mass 
from Rome. So Frederick Buechner, the writer and Presbyterian pastor, was there, and he expected there to be this holy atmosphere of stillness and silence, anticipation and reverence. Instead, he says, it was like a chaotic circus, not holiness. It was a bit crazy. The crowd was rambunctious and loud. They were jockeying for position nearest the main aisle in the great sanctuary, the cathedral. People were generally unfriendly, growling and scrowling at each other. So there was a flurry of activity, of things getting done right before the service started. And all at once, it happened. The Pope entered the cathedral. An old Pope being carried in and a hush fell over the entire sanctuary. Bigner describes it. He says the old Pope was staring into the crowd as though he could see into your soul. He was, it was as though he was searching to meet Christ in, our, in someone who had gathered that night. Maybe in all who had gathered. So in the searching and finally the silence, A holy hush displaced the chaos. The commotion of chaos finally settled into that holy hush. It finally came. And the celebration of Christ's birth enveloped not only those gathered there, but Millions of others who watched that night. We all need a silent night, a holy night. We have a picture in our head and in our heart of how it should go. Maybe even like Mary and Joseph did, but it never unfolds perfectly or even as we expect. Like Kevin getting left home alone or the squirrel tearing up the house in the Griswold family Christmas. Our Christmas can get a little crazy. That's really the grace of it. In the chaos and craziness, the grace of God comes. God draws near, often despite the pandemonium unfolding around us. So like Mary and Joseph, whose lives were disrupted and displaced, who were afraid and unsure, all we can do is trust. All we can do is trust that God comes nearest to us exactly in the chaos and craziness of our lives. So take heart tonight. Be encouraged tonight. Finally, let the holy hush of God settle over you and know that even in the chaos, the craziness, the pandemonium, even in all of that, the holy night comes. That's our story because it's God's story. God coming to us as God with us. We need a silent, we need a holy night. And it eventually comes with a holy hush. And so may it be so for all of us as we celebrate the birth of Christ. God is with us. May it be so for us when we need it most, even in this crazy, chaotic year. God be with you. Grace and peace to you. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in
in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees for oh, he the angels voices O oh, night divine O oh, night when Christ was born Oh, night divine, oh, night, oh, night divine. Led by the light of faith serenely be, with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand. So led by light of a star sweetly gleaming, here came the wise man from the Orient's land. The King of Kings lay thus in lowly manger in all our trials, born to be a friend. He knows our need. To weakness is no strength.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. Wherever you may be this evening, may the peace of Christ reign in your hearts. Because God's story is a story of coming near, sharing the divine self with us through Christ, the very one we welcome this night, then it's cause for great thanksgiving. So the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, at this blessed Christmas feast, we give you thanks and praise. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You made us in your image, and though we have sinned and fall short of your glory, you loved the world so much that you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and dejected, rejected. As in the poverty of a stable Jesus was born, so from suffering and death you raised him to bring us life. Therefore, with the angels who sang glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth, we, your people, in all ages... And the whole company of heaven now join together in the song of an ending praise, saying and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Truly holy are you, and blessed is your son Jesus. As your word became flesh, born of woman, on that night long ago, so on the night he offered himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, on this Christmas Eve, the night of Christ's birth, in remembrance of all of your acts of mighty grace and salvation in Jesus Christ, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which we offer in union with Christ's sacrifice for us as a living and holy surrender of ourselves to you. Send the power of your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ, Emmanuel, be one body in him, cleansed by his blood, faithfully serving him in the world, and looking forward to his coming. 
and final victory. Through Him, with Him, in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now may we pray as we close our communion service on this Christmas Eve. Gracious God, you have given yourself to us. Now we give ourselves for others, following the example of Christ, the one who comes, Emmanuel. Your love has made us new. It has transformed us. As your spirit dwells within us, we ask that you make us people of love. Of love so that we may serve you with great joy and make your presence and your gracious action known in our world. Your glory has filled our hearts. Now help us to glorify you in all things. In the name of Christ, the one who comes. Amen.
God comes to us in the Christ child. He comes as light into the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And so may this night and every night, may Christ come to you as the light of the world, as light, grace, and peace. Peace be with you. Amen.